We are told that the British built a grand capital in Delhi, which they called New Delhi, to show off the might of the British Empire in India. Why is it then that the dome of the most prominent building in that city, the Viceroy's Palace, was modelled on the Sanchi Stupa? Hi, I am Swapna Little and I am going to tell you all about why the dome of the Rashtrapati Bhavan looks like the Sanchi Stupa. The Rashtrapati Bhavan, where the President of India lives, was built a hundred years ago as the palace of the Viceroy, who was the highest representative of Britain, which ruled India then. It was the centerpiece of a brand new capital city, New Delhi, which the British had decided to found. To unravel our mystery, we first need to understand why the British had decided to move the capital to Delhi at all. They had been ruling India from Calcutta for more than a century. The city was not only the political and administrative centre, but it was also where many British businesses were located. But there was a problem. The Indian national movement was growing. Indians were asking for a greater say in how they were governed. They were questioning why they were ruled by the representatives of a foreign power. And many were demanding independence. As an answer to this, the British decided to transfer the capital from Calcutta to Delhi. The idea was to give the British Raj a makeover. The Indian public had to be convinced that the British were just the same as the other empires that had ruled India in the past, such as the Mughal and the Mauryas. And since for much of this time, Delhi had been the capital, the British could show this connection by moving their capital to Delhi. The transfer of capital was announced in a grand darbar that was held in Delhi in December 1911, to celebrate the crowning of the British King George V as Emperor of India. Here also, the links with earlier Indian traditions were emphasised. The Emperor rode out of the Red Fort at the head of a procession, just as earlier Mughal Emperors used to do. He and his Queen, Mary, appeared in a Jharokha Darshan over the fort walls, just as many Indian rulers, including the Mughals, used to appear before their subjects. Then began the building of a new capital in Delhi. The architect of Viceroy's house, Edwin Lutyens, was told that he must put in as many Indian features as he could. And he did just that. He covered Viceroy's house in red and beige sandstone, which was the material used in many important Indian buildings. He added Indian features like chhatris, jalis and a chhajja. Racking his brain and when he could think of nothing else, he added elephants, as that was the ultimate Indian motif. And of course, he added the lotus. Most prominent of all was the high dome of the building, which closely followed the design of the great stupa at Sanchi, a Buddhist shrine built in the 3rd century BCE. The railings around Vijay Chowk, below Rashtrapati Bhavan, were also designed along the lines of the railings of the stupa. The Indians were not convinced of these token gestures, of course, because the Viceroy was, after all, ruling India on behalf of a foreign country which had not been the case with the older Indian empires. The Indians continued to fight for independence, which came in 1947, just 16 years after New Delhi had been inaugurated. Luckily, there was a suitable Indian-looking building into which an Indian head of state, the President or Rashtrapati, could move. Viceroy's house was seamlessly transformed into Rashtrapati Bhavan. 